Tof dat je op het punt staat om deze video te bekijken. Ik ben Matthijs Kok en ik ben ondernemer en ik doe er alles aan om jou te inspireren en te motiveren het maximale uit jezelf en uit je business te halen. Vind je mijn video's dus tof? Klik even op abonneer en is de video goed genoeg, geef hem dan even een duimpje, dan weet ik dat ik op de goede weg ben. Welkom bij de Branded bij Matthijs podcast. De podcast over branding, ondernemerschap, bedrijfscultuur en de zoektocht naar succes. Zo. So. Hello podcast, it's my uh, first uh, podcast I do for myself in English. I was a guest a few times before and did some English podcasts as well, but this is my first Ask Matthijs podcast. I'm not sure if the name is staying because I think it's not that good of a name, but maybe in the future I will change it. And I'm here today with the CEO of uh, Sleeknote, Mogens Muller. I don't know if I say it right because you're from Denmark. Hello. <laughs> Yes, hello, hello, and very good pronounced. It was completely right. So cool, great job. <laughs> Ten points for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, can you introduce yourself? So tell us yeah. who you are and, and what Sleek Notes. Sure, sure. Well, as you said, my name is Morgans. Uh, I'm CEO and co-founder of this uh, company called Sleek Note. Um, very short about us, we have uh, this tagline that kind of says it all: uh, "Say goodbye to annoying pop-ups. Say hello to Sleek Note." So we kind of, uh, we do pop-ups, uh, but we try to help mainly e-commerce, but also well, all kinds of websites and businesses to do more intelligent and personalized pop-ups so they can get more email subscribers, they can engage with the visitors, they can help them, guide them, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. But that's like in very short about uh, us. And personally, well, uh, I'm married, got three small kids, a fourth one coming in two weeks. So uh, cool. pretty busy yeah. also in yeah. these Corona times. I don't know when this is going to be published, but uh, quite a lot to, <laughs> to do. Uh, today I'm at the, I'm at a, we got a little satellite office um, here in Denmark where it's only me sitting. So I'm, I'm, it's, it's quiet here. So we, we won't be disturbed. Uh, don't, <laughs> okay, cool. don't worry about that. Uh, but I think that's the, the short story about me. How long ago did you found, and, and I think you are with five co-founders? Yes, we are five Can you five tell me a little bit more about the, the found, founding and foundation of Sleek Note? Yeah, sure. So we actually, uh, we are uh, kind of like a product of two small uh, startups uh, merging together. Okay. So I think it's six years ago, we were two small startups that kind of had the same idea and we developed those, those ideas uh, in parallel. And then um, I actually met with one of the guys from the other company. Uh, yeah. Our company was called Twami and the other one was called Sleeknote. I met with him. I used to work with him at an agency, web agency back in the days. Yeah. And we talked together at a conference and say, hey, okay, we're doing something similar. Maybe we should just team up instead. And then instead of trying to compete in the little local Danish market, why not make a product where we can be together and, and compete against the biggest um, uh, SaaS businesses in this, in this uh, industry in the world. Yeah. Um, so so very early on, we merged these two well. companies and that's yeah. why we are so many co-founders. Okay, cool. <laughs> so what did the two companies do and, and which part of the sleek note is what you started as a startup? Mm -hmm. And yeah. which part so, is origin? Yeah, so so like I can I can of course tell the the origin story from from the company that I was a part of in the first is like half a year, a little year or so. So I was working as a consultant uh, within conversion optimization, I helped a lot of online stores in uh, optimizing their websites. And I got this one task from uh, one of my bigger customers. It was a travel agency that yeah. they wanted to get more email subscribers from their website because that was pretty valuable for them to send out all these newsletters. Yeah. But they yeah. wanted to do this without hurting the, the user experience and without kind of interrupting the visitors. So they tried some different things uh, with like a very intrusive pop-ups that takes, all, uh, takes over the whole screen and you can't yeah. really close it again. And they just saw that the bounce rate were um, increasing and the conversion rate was decreasing while they did this. So I yeah. kind of got the task to do it more intelligently. Uh, and then I developed a very like simple prototype together with their uh, web agency, uh, hard coded it on the website got a lot of good uh, results from it, uh, then implemented that on their other uh, travel agencies. It was kind of like a big company with different smaller travel agencies. Yeah. And we got the same amount of, of uh, new 
subscribers and really good results, then no kind of decrease in conversion rates or uh, increase in bounce rate. Yeah. And those who subscribed were actually pretty good quality. Cool. So like the short, the short story from there was that I, 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 were, um, I wrote a, a blog post about this on my little website back then. That was yep. kind of how I did marketing back then. Yeah, and and wrote a, a case about this, and I think in the next two three days, I got between forty to fifty uh, emails from online stores that wanted to integrate the same thing on their website, yeah. uh, and I got this every day. So it, it kind of you know it looked like we have hit something in the market where people really wanted this, but they could not find anything out of the box, um, and this was six, seven years ago, uh, of course, today you can find something like Sleek Note. We are not like the only ones in the world doing this yeah. anymore. Um, and then you we, the then I teamed up with, sorry? You were the first. <laughs> uh, I don't know, one Welcome. of the first. Yeah, I guess yeah. there was someone else doing something similar, but it was, at least in Denmark, very hard to find. Yeah. Uh, there were some WordPress plugins you can install, but nothing like you could do on just a normal website. No. Um, what is the what is the most what is the intelligent side of the of the thing yeah. we are talking about now? Yeah. So back then it was very simple. Back then it was just uh, something that kind of slided in very kind of um, you know very calm and easy without taking the whole screen and you can close it and then it will slide down and then it will stay in the bottom with a little bar so you can open it up again. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. For example, if you give your new visitors a promo code uh, for the first order. And a lot of websites shows a pop-up and then they remove it and then they can't find it again when they are in the checkout flow. <laughs> yeah. so that's a little simple thing we did back then. Today, we got a whole kind of rule engine behind where you can do all kinds of targeting. So you kind of get it, the message personalized based on you know, IP detection, based on you know, which uh, traffic source they're coming from, based on the behavior on the website. So, of course, since then, we've built a lot of kind of intelligence into this system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But back then, that was the most intelligent and most differentiating thing in regards to the, th the, to the other solutions that were out there. Yeah, basically, we just saw like different results from the other tools. The other tools kind of decreased the conversion rate, interrupted the, the user journey, and this simple little thing that I, you know, got the idea to building was just a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> and then we kind of built the, the, the company on, on top of that. Yeah, cool. Found these yeah. other, uh, this other team that kind of had the same ideas as, uh, as uh, we had. And then we merged and grew from there. Yeah. And how big is the company at this point? I think I see a lot of um, photos on the website. Yeah, we are around 30 employees today. Okay. Yeah. Ba and own solely based from uh, Denmark, Aarhus, or um, also yes. other? Um, we are mainly in, uh, in Denmark, Aarhus, but we also a remote team. So we got employees in the uh, US, in Sweden, in Poland, um, around the world, Estonia, other places. Okay, and so, they work from uh, we home? Are or? Pretty remote. And they work so. from home or are they, uh, do you have yeah, offices? Yeah. Some of them work from home and some of them work at a little office close to where they live. It's actually yeah. up to them. We, we, we pay for, if they want to get a little office, we pay for that uh, yeah. as a kind of remote uh, package. That you we, don't, uh, you uh, don't have your own remote offices? Uh, no, no, not yet. Uh, no. Simply because we don't have more people at the same places. No. Um, okay. we, we just, when we hire, we all almost uh, every time we just hire for where it's a kind of, uh, allowed for remote people to to um, to search as well, and uh, if we find that the best pre person is a remote guy or girl, then well, we hire that person. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we actually the first one we hired was a guy from Estonia. So from day almost day one, this has been how we run the company. So it's yeah. not that different these days because of all these Corona things. <laughs> <laughs> the crap. Yeah. Okay. And and what are the the, the main goals for the near future? Uh, well, we got we got a lot of goals. Uh, we got one big goal to hit 2,000 paying customers. Uh, we are at around 1,700 now. Cool. So that's a big goal. Uh, then we got another goal to become cash flow positive. <laughs> also a pretty big one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we are very close. Actually, we uh, we our target is to hit cash flow positive in two quarters in a row. Yeah. And we just in the first quarter of 2020 hit the first quarter. So now we hope, even though we got all this 
COVID-19 <laughs> corona things we hope to accomplish also doing in the next quarter and then we will yeah. have a big party or something like that cool. um, but until now we have we if we have we are not a venture case so we haven't like burned a lot of money but we have have some angel investors and we've had a loan uh, from the, the our bank the local bank yeah okay and and um uh, are the the 700 1700 current clients mainly in the nordics or are you also in other parts of the world because you said you have people in america and uh... yeah we are we have around 60 percent of our customers from the nordics so we yeah. it's it's Still, it's pretty obvious that we are based in Denmark. We can see that we got most of our customers there. But yeah. uh, we do today have customers in around 47 uh, countries. Cool. Um, so we are all over the world, uh, but, but, but most of our customers still in Denmark, Norway, Sweden. But we also actually got more and more customers now from the Netherlands. Uh, we got some from Spain, from Italy, uh, and quite a lot from US as well. Yeah. What are the, the main pillars that are keeping you from hitting the 2000 mark? Uh, wow, that's a good question. Um, I would say, I would say in general, um, I think that's the case for a lot of SaaS businesses, but churn is, is always hard. Um, and we can definitely see that now that we, you know, when you have hundred customers and let's say you churn 2% of your customers every month. Yeah. Then like losing two customers, it's not that bad. Maybe you get 20 new and nets you two. have yeah. 18. Yeah. But now when we almost have 2000 customers and we lose around maybe 1.5%, maybe two in some months, 2%, it's quite a lot of customers actually. It's, yeah. it's like, you know, it's, it's 30, 40 customers. So just to keep status quo, we need to add 40 new customers or 50 new customers. And yeah. that's, and are you we, also you looking at the, to do that? It's just really hard. Yeah, and are you also looking at the reasons why they are going away? Is this because yeah. they go bankrupt, or is it because the product isn't what they thought it was, or what's yeah, the main? Yeah, we're doing a, we're doing a lot of different initiatives uh, regarding churn prevention. Um, so, so definitely one of the things is to to track every reason, uh, every customer, and ask them why they they. Uh, uh, they chose to churn yeah. uh, and then we divide that into categories and then we have some different initiatives uh, both on regarding how to hopefully win them back yeah. but also yeah. what I think is even more interesting is to figure out before they churn uh, that they are in in risk of churning yeah so that could be you know we look at some different uh, we have built this kind of AI on top of our uh, churn sheet so on top of the churn numbers we can now begin to predict which customers will churn in the next three months. Yeah. That's based on some different parameters, for example, the usage, uh, how active they are in our platform, in the platform, if they have opened up our pricing page recently, yeah. uh, if they have you know, removed the script from the website, it's potentially because they got a new website and they haven't moved sleep note to that website, then it means they'll probably churn pretty soon. Yeah. So a lot of parameters we've tried to put that into this AI and now we can begin to predict it and then reach out to them proactively before they actually realize that they need to, you know, cancel a subscription. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, um, and, and do you see a lot of bankruptcies as well at this moment due to Corona and COVID or? or? Uh, we see a bit higher churn numbers in, in the last month and a half. Um, and we do that mainly from travel uh, industry. Yeah. Um, we have around 15% of our customers related to travel. So that is, you know, we got some airlines, we got, um, we got some airports, for example, yeah. Copenhagen airport was one of yeah. our biggest customers. Uh, obviously they lost everything, every kind of revenue stream in, yeah. in a week or so. So uh, in, in relation to that, they also just cut it every kind of tool uh, they got. Yeah. Um, we got you know, some airlines, we got some big travel agencies. I'll, see, I say, I'll say that we see much higher churn in these industries in these days. Yeah. Um, but on the, the positive side, we also get actually more customers than we do normally uh, because our tool is pretty suited for a situation like this because companies want to take more advantage of their website in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, communicate to customers that also that's also what our tool is doing, just informing them about uh, you know, how it's like to shop on this website uh, yeah. when it's Corona time. Um, yeah. 
So, uh, so actually, we in March, we got the same amount of customers as we did in November, which is normally our high season because of Black Friday and yeah, Christmas. Yeah. Cool. So we get a lot of new customers, but unfortunately, I was also churned from well. traveling. Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. So um, in regards to, uh, I saw a, a movie on the website and I saw a little paragraph uh, stating your vision on company culture. Can you take us... Uh, through that mm -hmm. a little bit yeah company culture yeah. great question um well in general it's it's culture uh, is something that we take very seriously in sleek note um we really invest in it and we really do everything we can uh, to be a great place to work um actually to be honest uh, we are five co-founders and we're not that big a, a team so we you know we just want to make a great place for ourselves uh, yeah. but also of course our colleagues yeah. um, but we do a lot of initiatives um, uh, in that regard um, for example we have now we are a remote team but every I think every quarter we have a meetup week where we bring all our employees to Denmark um, and then we have a whole week where we do uh, an OKR workshop. So we do some objectives and key results every quarter yeah. and we do that yeah. together. Uh, then we go out and, you know, have uh, get some beers and play eight ball or whatever it is in that week as well, do some activities. We also have a hackathon in this, in this week where we work on a, on a project that somebody from the company has decided that we need to work on yeah. to focus more on. So actually we have a few days before this hackathon, we got a pitch day for every employee, employee can pitch ideas yep. that, that we should then focus on in this hackathon. That way, all employees kind of have a power uh, of what we do in Sleek Note. And I can see that people really like that. Um, so we, we kind of do a lot of initiatives to keep everyone involved. And then we, it, sound, it sounds a bit like a, like a cliche, but we are very transparent. Uh, yeah. So everyone, for example, in these Corona days, they can see our numbers every single day uh, also if we get a big churn from big customer everyone can see how it affects our business yeah um so so we do different stuff and for example one way we we track this which is a pretty new thing that we do is that we do enps so employee net promoter score yeah i'm, I'm pretty pretty proud that we actually got a net promoter e, uh, nps above 90 uh, in the last one that we did here in yeah. january so, um, so we do a lot of stuff there and, and now also begin to, to track it. Um, Which tool do you use for, to, to, to track the EMPS? Uh, so we just use uh, SurveyMonkey, um, yeah, okay. very simple tool. This is actually also one of the things that, you know, I don't know if I can recommend others to do it, but it's something that we are very uh, happy about. It is um, in this uh, EMPS, that's actually a question out of, uh, uh, different questions that I ask every employee every quarter. We call it company pulse. Yep. So I send out an, an anonymous uh, survey to all employees every quarter where I ask different questions. Yep. One of the things is, for example, if you were in my CEO shoes tomorrow, what would you do differently? Mm -hmm. um, and that's a really good question uh, to ask uh, the employees and also to get them to answer anonymously because it kind of makes them think if I were in Moans' shoes, what would I do differently? Yeah. Would I buy a better coffee machine? Would I hire more sales reps? Would I focus more on development? Would, you know, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And I get you input, know, right? yeah. inputs in all directions. And, that's, yeah. and then um, what I think is key there is then uh, every, we got a, something called state of the company. So every quarter we, we present the numbers from the last month and how it's going. And in the state of the company after the, co the latest company pulse, I then present all the feedback and all the inputs uh, I got from employees to the whole company. Yep. So ev again, being transparent, so everyone can see what we have kind of suggested and what we talked about. And then yep. I also have like an action point. So this is what you said, and this is what we're going to focus on doing now. Um, cool. And of course, something we are not going to change, for example, you know, and getting a new coffee machine it's it's pretty expensive and the one we already have is pretty good yeah so so we won't buy a new one but then i will explain why we don't want why why we don't buy a new one so being more being very transparent about that and just ask your employees i think works very very well for us yeah. at least is there is there a downside to that as well because i did the same thing for a few years and my company i think in the last, no, I know, in the last year that I was uh, a CEO at that company, was around 40 people. We had like two different 
uh, offices in the Netherlands. So that's very near to each other. Mm -hmm. um, and when you are that big or small, depending on how you look at things, <laughs> uh, it, that you see that people are a little bit like, okay, is this as, um, how did you call it? Anonymous? Mm -hmm. Is this as anonymous as I think it is? Or do they know more? Because if you are that big or small, you know uh, in, in regards to the, the way people pronounce sentences, uh, maybe IP address, you know from which country they are. So they are not that anonymous. They think they are not that anonymous. It's completely how you are acting to it. I know, but... Mm -hmm. Do you do you recognize what I'm saying uh, re in regards to this or? Mm, actually, not not really. Uh, I can understand um, your thoughts about it, and and maybe someone has thought about that. I I, I of course I can't deny that, yeah. uh, but it's not it's not feedback that I've got from Jewish anyone. No. Okay. Um, also, because you know it's it's the 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 reason why it's anonymous is just because I want people to be honest. Um, so it's, it's not because they're kind of revealing any secrets in general. It's just, I don't want them to, that I, I look at them in a, a angle or a perspective because it's this person from marketing who's saying this. Yeah. Um, so I, actually I, I haven't kind of got that kind of feedback, um, yeah. but maybe it will come in the maybe future. I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It may, may, may be something to look forward to because, um, or, or maybe take into consideration because it's something that I uh, really saw in my company also did the same thing presented in the group okay this is the feedback that we got this is what we're going to do with it and then also do it huh? because if you say you will do it and you don't then you also have a big problem <laughs> yeah yeah I think I think you're right there if, if you begin to do this you should definitely you know think about um, a way to kind of take action on this, these things, yeah. or at least um, argue that you won't take action. Yeah. Um, so, so you need to have some kind of process to, to get this feedback, talk to, for example, before we have this day of the company meeting where I presented to all employees, we got a co-founder meeting with, with yeah, the, the people that have founded the company with, yeah. where I present the same feedback and kind of ask them, what do you think we should do uh, based on this with, feedback? Should yeah, we now yeah. say that we go in this new direction or what, 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 what should we do? Yeah. So, so um, I think it's, it's important that you have this kind of process. Um, and, and, and when you begin to open up like this, you, I don't think you can really go back from it. Because um, then, then you would have to say, we stopped doing company polls because now we don't want to be transparent and honest anymore. <laughs> that's, that's a hard one <laughs> to sell strange. to the company. Yeah, strange, so, yeah. so, but, but I'll say in general, we just, we just did it. We didn't think that much about it. And yeah. today we're really happy about it. We've done it for two, three years and, yeah. and it's working really well and, and people love it. And that's, at least as far as I know. And then and in regards to hiring or firing people, what are you doing in, in that regard? Uh, in line in, with the company general? culture? Yeah. Um, well, uh, luckily we haven't fired that many people, uh, yet. Um, but, uh, of course we, we have had to, to, to fire a few. Um, and I think, uh, so I, I think we, and we know more about hiring people and, uh, when we hire people, we, it's, it's kind of different from department to department. If we're hiring a, a copywriter or if we're hiring a, a developer or a sales rep, but something that we do in general is that we use, um, um, uh, what's it called, personal uh, profiles. So we, we, we run something called in, Insights Discovery. Yep. It's a personal profile on everyone. It's a bit like, it's a bit like disk profiles. It's just a yep. bit easier to understand. Um, so we always do that, I think, when we got three people left um, to kind of see if there's any blind spots, any angles that we haven't seen yet. Um, for example, also when we hire remotely, it's really important. Uh, it might be that someone is saying to us, uh, you know, it's no problem. I can work remotely. I'm not really that um, social person anyway, so it's no problem. And then we do a personal profile and yeah. it tells us the completely different story yeah. that they love to be together with people. They are a very, in, in, in discovery um, um, insights, it's called a yellow person. Yeah. So if you're very yellow and you work remotely, we should definitely be aware of that. 
yeah. uh, because in the long run, that person will probably to have to yeah. quit his job and get a job where he can go out and, and have employees um, yeah. uh, or, or co-workers every day. Yeah. Um, so personal profiles is something that we work uh, on a lot. And then in general, we love to do tasks. So for developers and marketing people, we do tasks and tests. Yeah. And for sales reps, we do role plays. Uh, I think that's the, that's the, the best way to get good uh, sales reps. Um, you, can, you, can, you, know, you can see a resume, you can talk to people uh, so much, but then if you go in another room, uh, give the sales rep a, a phone and you go in another room, have a phone, and then you begin to talk and make the person sell the comp the, the, your product to me, yeah. then in 10 it's seconds, the I can tell if this it. person yeah. is a good one. Yeah. So, so there are some, some small hacks in, in the different positions and different uh, uh, departments. Cool. So you really think about the, the way you hire people uh, in regards to company culture and, and talent as well? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I'll say it's, it's maybe one of the, the areas where you can kind of, you know, where it's, you know, it's very, very expensive if you, in general, hire the the, the yeah, wrong people. Yeah. Um, because it's it's you know, uh, you you use a lot of time on it. You maybe have three four months where it's not working. Then you have a three four months where you're trying to get it to work, even though you don't, even though you know it it's not working. And then you you know you fire them, and they have like three months before they stop. Yeah. So it, it's a lot of time that you could have spent on a good profile instead. So I will say if something has changed from when we found this league until now, it is that we use longer time on finding the right people. Uh, for example, I hired a CFO, uh, so a chief financial officer, yeah. um, the end of 2019. Yeah. And I used, I think I spent around a year finding that person. Mm. Um, you, know, I, you know, I and I have different, I think I have three kind of, uh, rounds of of you know, interviews and then uh, going down to two three people and then I was just in a situation where well I it, it's not the right one even though it's we are down from a hundred to two people I still have a feeling that this is not going to be the right person then I started it all over again okay so that's how much we go into depth about finding the right ones okay. um, because it's just you know it, it's just so expensive if if, if yeah, and, it's, and I think it's killing for your company and your own moral as well. Exactly, you exactly. mishire too too many times. Yeah, and when that is said, you you know you you can never have any insurance that you won't like mishire, uh, and and you you can't be too hard on, on yourself if you do, because no. that that will, that will just happen. You, there are some blind of, things yeah. that you cannot really predict. It's a very um, important part of entrepreneurship, right? Making making mistakes as lots as as lot of it as you can yeah sure sure yeah, yeah. so you were a consultant in a, in a conversions uh, co uh, company you said you told me yeah. um uh, it was it a an, an like an uh, uh how do you call it a, an hour factory <laughs> i don't know if it, it's a yeah, the yeah. Right english word <laughs> built, built by hour <laughs> built by hour yeah, yeah. what uh, are the main yes. differences between the both uh, structures in a company. So you are now in a SaaS, so it's far more scalable mm -hmm. than the other one was. What are the main differences between the two? Yeah, that's a really good question. They are, it's like, there are some big, big differences. Um, uh, well, I worked as a consultant, both in a marketing agency. Then I also worked as a kind of uh, single army person, freelancer a few years afterwards. Um, and when I did that, you know, I, I, I was very dependent on who is going to buy my hours the next month or the next yeah. two months. Yeah. And I was very dependent on, you know, how the market was going. For example, in a situation like this, I would be probably hurt pretty much yeah. because yeah, people point, are yeah. not buying new projects right now, yeah. at least in Denmark. Um, but, I, but if you look at our software business, you know, even though we get a, some churned customers from travel agency, we are having exactly the same revenue as we had last month. We ju just adding a little bit of new uh, monthly recurring revenue to that. So it's it's so much more stable uh, to run a SaaS business. It's much more predictable, but it's also harder to build it up. You know, it, to to get to a level where you have I don't know a million uh, in revenue every month. It's much harder to get to that point 
in a SaaS business than if you are a, um, you know, a consultant uh, because you have to maybe build three, four projects and then you hit a million in a consultant business. Yeah. Uh, but also the next month you can have a bad month and you, don't, can, you cannot invoice yeah. anything. Yeah. So it, I would say it's a lot more predictable. Um, and also that's also the reason why when you know, uh, venture capitalists and, and uh, big capital firms, when they kind of uh, evaluate the, the, um, the price of, of different businesses, SaaS businesses are normally those who get the highest kind of valuation or multiples on their revenue because yeah. the revenue is just very easy. To yeah, yeah, you know it's recurring, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. So uh, you told me about a week that you invite or you bring over all the employees to Denmark. Is, that, mm -hmm. is this a week that, a, that the customers of Sleek Note don't get any response on the, on the support side? <laughs> or, <laughs> or is the company uh, still running? Because I think that's a big difference as well. Be exactly. The, exactly. Because the tool is, is running for itself mainly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So You're you, completely can, you right. have way more relaxed moments in the company in yes. a SaaS business than you have yes. in a hourly build business. I, I completely agree. And, and that is one of the, the, the sweet things about running a SaaS business, that we, we are able to take a week where we focus on you know, something completely else than we normally do, and the business is just still running. Yeah. Uh, of course, we have a customer success department that we need to keep afloat. That means we got two people in our customer success team and they cannot just say, you know, now we do something completely else the next week and we let the, the inbox uh, stay where it is and, yeah. and shut down the phones. We can't do that. But, but, but um, if those two people, uh, actually we, we can, uh, if we really had to cut it down, we can do it with one people, right? Uh, one person right now. If we have one person working full time, that person can actually kind of make the company running regarding support. Yeah. Uh, then of course, sometimes we need to fix some bugs as well. And then we do sometimes need to, to pull in a developer to help us. Um, but I will say that is a huge difference uh, from uh, a consultancy and to a SaaS business like ours. We could actually go to Spain for a month and do something completely else than yeah. what we do today. And we will probably still have the same amount of revenue. Yeah. Um, so, so I think that that's a very kind of, it's, a it's a good feeling running a business like that because yeah. you are not all the time worried about what's happening tomorrow. Yeah. Um, not, not, not in the same on, way. Your, on your people as well and the knowledge of your people. And I know it's a, it's a big and important thing. People are, you have to have the right people also, but if all your customers are depending on the knowledge of your consultants, uh, then you have like more customers to talk to in regards to when things are going wrong or they are not getting what they expected. Yes, yes. That's a hard one as well. And actually, a funny, funny story about this is that uh, about a year ago, we, we actually decided to make a little consultancy within Sleeknote. So uh, we also got consultants now. Uh, but it was mainly because of a... Um, a push from some of our customers that they wanted more help in setting up their Signal campaigns. Yeah. So more of them, when we looked at our churn sheets, said that you know Signal can do so many things, but we we want help and we want some you know be able to buy some hours from you to set it up and to optimize it. Yeah. Um, and and when we begin to lose some bigger customers because of that reason, we thought you know why not make a little department within sleek note where we you know bill hours um uh, so so actually we we do today we have do something like uh, it, three yeah. people um working for our customers where our customers can buy a kind of an extra plan on top of their software yeah. so they still have the software subscription but then they can also buy some some uh, some some help to doing uh, setting up their campaigns or uh, doing some conversion optimization or yeah. even email marketing we begin to look a bit into now cool cool is there anything we didn't discuss yet that you wanted to talk about in this podcast mm, well something i could just mention a bit about is you know the the, the topic that we are looking at or the industry that we are in in sleep note is that we're helping mainly e-commerce but websites in general doing 
intelligent pop-ups. Yeah. Uh, we just actually recently uh, pulled some uh, data across all our customers on some best practices uh, about this. Um, and I could just mention some quick numbers. It might be interesting for those who are listening to this yeah, because cool. well, many websites today show some kind of you know, on-site engagement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sure, so just yeah. a few takeaways that at least I think was interesting when I read it. Um, so when you're triggering these kind of pop-ups or messages on your website, um, the most used one there is a timed trigger. So that is that it should uh, show yeah, up 15, after let's say five 15, or six seconds. seconds. Yeah. Yeah. The sweet spot we found out is between six to eight seconds. Uh, in general, we see a conversion rate between three point five and four percent when you have that. Um, is that, is that and eight. Yeah. Is it while browsing or is this when the when there are no mouse it, strokes or keystrokes? It's after entering the website. So okay. after entering one's website, after like six to eight seconds, and the next one, the next best kind of time interval is between 25 to 30 seconds. Um, and and uh, funny enough, showing a pop-up after one to four seconds had a really low conversion rate. Oh, really? I think yeah. mainly because people are just saying, you know, what is this? Close it down right away. Yeah. Um, and, and another one around, where, where am I and what am I looking at? And then when the pop-up comes. Exactly, second, exactly. Way too fast, yeah. Um, and another interesting thing is the scroll triggers. That's the, 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 the second most used one that we have. That is when people scroll down the website, but then you can show some kind of uh, pop-up there. Yeah. The sweet spot here is between 30 to 50% scroll down on a page. Yeah. We normally yeah. see a conversion rate between three to 4%. Uh, if you show it already after 10 to 30% uh, percent on, on scroll, it's, it's too intrusive. You only get a conversion rate around 1.5. And also, if you show it too late, so that's after, let's say, 70 to 100%, we also see a very low conversion rate. Yeah. Um, so, and just a, a last thing here is a conversion rate. When you look at content, what can you do with the content in these boxes to improve conversions? If you add an image, um, uh, compared to not having an image, in, an image you, we normally, or we in general, see an improvement of 80% in conversions. For real. So just by adding an image to your pub-up can really improve something here. It doesn't matter what image? Or do of, you course also... it, of course it matters which image it is. <laughs> yeah. um, but but this, is, this is in general uh, across 1,700 uh, customers. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so yeah, you just show... Use the human gaze as well in there, or...? Sorry? Do you see people use the, the, the human gaze in the in these images as well? Do you know the human uh, gaze? Um, no, no, we don't. We don't actually track that in these things. We do. We do some eye tracking, uh, but we do that mainly when we do usability tests. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's also a really interesting area. Uh, but also regarding input fields, we saw that uh, if you had one input field you would normally see a conversion rate around 3%. If you had two input fields, you would normally see a conversion rate around 3.3%. So actually higher conversion with two input more fields fields. instead okay. of one. Yeah. And then if you add one more, so if you have three input fields, it drops to around 1.1%. Okay. So, so the sweet spot here is actually two input fields. I thought it was one, uh, but, yeah. but two is actually really good. And then if you need to collect more data, something that we do in Slicknode is that we offer our customers a multi-step campaign. So you can ask for, let's say, name and email in the first step, but you also want people's, let's say, zip code, maybe their gender or birthday yeah. Yeah. or whatever it might be. Then we ask for that in the second step. Uh, so we, we kind of save the permission in the first step and then we'll see if they fill out the information the next step, we will send that to the, the ESP, the, the, the email provider also. Yeah. So to kind of, you know, uh, split it up a bit makes a lot of sense because then you get the permission and then you can begin to get more data afterwards. Yeah. So do you integrate with all the different systems? You want. Yeah, cool. Thanks for that. It's, it's really, uh, really good to know. Do you integrate with all uh, different uh, uh, platforms out there or is it like an iframe that you put in your... Uh, yeah, your so, so uh, how it works is that you create a free trial on our website, sleeknote.com. Then you go into kind of like an editor where you can design it yourself, build it, drag and drop, all this. And then afterwards, you get a little tracking script, so a little code that you just add to your website, yep. like, you know, Hotjar or Google Analytics or whatever you might have. You, often you can um, uh, implement that through your Google Tag Manager if you use that. Yep. And then when, when you've done this, well, then it's live on your website. And if you collect email subscribers through this box, we have, uh, you set up an integration with the email provider that you have. 
So that could be, you know, MailChimp, Active Campaign, Campaign Monitor. And then we have these integrations built into Sleeknow. Um, and actually, right now, we are getting quite a lot of new customers uh, in the Netherlands. So we are doing new integrations with also some of the national um, uh, email providers in the Netherlands right now. So if anyone is listening to this and they want a specific integration, just let me know. Uh, yeah. And I would love to, uh, we'd love to look into that because it is kind of a focus area for us right now. Yeah. Do you know Copernica? Sorry? Copernica? Uh, yeah, we, we have looked at it, but we don't have an integration yet, but that would definitely be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Good to know. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for your time and thank you for, uh, for being on the, on the podcast. Uh, sure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You're welcome. And uh, let's stay in touch. You never yeah, know what we can do, do for each other. Great. Great. It was a pleasure. Same here. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Super tof dat je deze video helemaal tot het einde hebt uitgekeken. Ben je al abonnee van mijn kanaal? En heb je de video ook al even een duimpje gegeven? Volg me op social media via de handle at AskMathijs of kijk eens op mijn website matthijskok.com.